Welcome to Deep Thought, Subcultures and the Economy. You know what? One thing, and I don't, you know, it is not a lot of talk about how the economic woes now are related to subcultures out here and a person's behavior. Now, they do have a, a, a school of thought in economics that's called behavioral economics that looks more at the emotion of economics but if you look at like the pundits on tv and you know on these shows they're talking about a lot of dry numbers and growth and everything but if you really want to understand why anything is happening why something's happening in a certain way you got to look at the subcultures you got to look at how people behaving in fact there's another form of a uh, school of thought in economics called cultural economics that does look at these things now, when I look at the subcultures and I look at the greater population, I already see what's going on and why there might be some issues. Like one of the things uh, you could say different generations represent different cultural values, right? Like a big thing now is the millennials aren't buying as many houses as they should. So a lot of these baby boomers might be dying or something. And if they don't leave the house to somebody or they're trying to sell it, people ain't trying to buy it as quickly. That's a subcultural thing. Or if you have, uh, you know, people with a subcultural norm of minimalism, right? You got a lot of millennials, especially, who are minimalists. They don't want to buy as much. They're not consumers. The U.S. economy is a consumer-based economy. So if you have people in this minimalist subculture who they're not buying as much, or if they do buy stuff, they might buy stuff secondhand. Well, that in itself affects uh retail that's a that's a part of the thing with the uh, so-called retail apocalypse anybody follow my business channel know i've had second thoughts about it but the fact that it's not as bad it's happening but it's not as bad as people think but part of the thing is you got a lot of people not buying stuff you know i've worked in a department store before and there were certain sections for young people that stayed empty half the time you know, it's like, you know, like this one department store I worked in, they had a section for juniors. Or as one woman who worked there called it slutware, right? Basically just younger women stuff. That section stayed empty half the time. Seriously, they, they, they didn't even bother staffing that area sometimes. <laughs> That's how bad it was. That's because a lot of younger people weren't shopping it. Because, um, you know, slut wear or not, a lot of young people didn't like it. It's ironic. You had older women who would buy the stuff. You know, those women in their 40s and 50s who, you know, stay in somewhat decent shape. Right? But that's a, that's a culture thing. You know, I talked about religious subcultures. You know, if you have an area that's predominantly Muslim, right? If you a business and you sell in your grocery store, your baking section might not be too big or your ham <laughs> section might be that that big. <laughs> it's like that affects it. That affects it. Understand something. One thing about subcultures, they all bring uh, their own value to them. So you can't separate. See, here's the thing. Really, you can't separate how someone thinks and how they live their life from their buying habits, from the economy. They're the same. The economy is more of a social thing anyway. It's more of a value thing. What do people value? They pay for it. Like a bookstores, like you you like a lot of people in poor neighborhoods, because that's economic subculture, social class, that's just culture in itself. Bookstores don't really do well in very poor neighborhoods. They don't do they don't do well at all. If you see a bookstore any place, it's usually going to be, you don't even see bookstores in, um, only time I've seen bookstores in maybe poor areas is maybe black bookstores when um, they were promoting, uh, black owned bookstores, and especially when they were really promoting the urban fiction. That's the only time you've seen it, and you know, that's, at least the bookstores promoting that, they've gone out, they, the books are harder to find now. I'm sure they're still selling somewhere, but, you know, but that's a subcultural thing, you know. And that's, that's something to consider because it's the value thing. It, it really was happening in, you know, it's not, you can't really separate and say, oh, the subculture and the economy is different. Because when you have these different subcultures and they're not buying into the mainstream culture, 
boom, what happens? Like if you have a bunch of, like if you have an area, right? Let's say it has a lot of alternative types, right? Alternative, like bohemian types, where they're not wearing like, you know, the business dresses or something like that. They work in fields or something like that. They work at the tea house, they work at the art place, bookstore, whatever. They don't have to wear suits, you know, and, you know, maybe not practicing a Judeo-Christian religion or something. That's going to affect, like, you know, the buying of clothes in that area. And that's really, if you look at the economy, that's really what's happening. See, the subculture thing, understand something. You got to, everything got to be looked, you can't look at something separate and don't think it affects something else. All right? Because even the economy or having money, that could affect people doing, even getting into subcultures. Because a lot of subcultures actually create, get created by poor people. And people don't have as much, so they got to make do. And then they create a style of something which is uh, appropriated by somebody who actually has money and then spread it out, you know? Because, oh, like, if you look at something like jeans, right? Jeans, those, those were for workers. That wasn't a stylish thing at first. Those were for workers. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, that's a regular thing. Now, everybody got to have jeans now. So, it's a... Uh, it's a, it's a it's a it's a it's a thing you have to look at because what it you know what people are thinking what their value system is what they're going to eat you know if, when you have vegans and I use this example someplace if you have an area that all of a sudden get an influx of vegans right people in a vegan animal it's like say they the like kind of hardcore they vegan the animal rights and stuff that's going to affect the food places in the area. That's going to affect the retail stores. You know, you might have some places, because you get the real hardcore ones, they don't even like dealing with leather. All right? So that's going to affect what can be sold there, uh, what type of jewelry stores. Like, if you, like say you have a bohemian subculture that dominates an area. You know, the normal diamond place that just have diamond stuff might not make it, but if you have a store that sells more of the funkier stuff, Boom, that might make it. Like, I have a very good friend. The one who, um, who actually uh, designed the logo I use on my Sunday videos. She works in a type of store that sells, like, that funky type of jewelry and uh, bohemian type of clothing. All right? Actually been good for her, but that's another video. But, you know, that affects what's being spent. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. If you really want to examine the economy, I don't look at the numbers. I don't look at what the Fed's doing and all of that. People look at that and can't figure out stuff. All you have to do is look at what the people are buying. <laughs> Seriously, look at what the people are buying. Look at the people in the area. And you take one look at them and say, okay, they ain't going to come in this store. Like if... Uh, you know, if I'm looking, if I'm scouting locations, like usually when I'm walking through a mall or something, I'm halfway thinking about a retail spot anyway. I'm looking at the people. I'm not even looking at the spots or what's going on. I'm just looking at the people and say, would they buy this? And why, why not, right? You know, if you, um, like in a religious subculture or something, right? Say you go to, uh, say you go to a, uh, uh, like a like a Christian conference or something. You selling some products. They have some vendors or something. You probably not going to sell like that erotic novel. <laughs> and that's how it works. You got to think about. And I know this sounds like a, something for the business thing, but it's all connected. See, like I said, the money, the money, your uh, and your lifestyle are connected is connected because you got to have the ability to practice your lifestyle money gives you the ability to go in at least in this culture unless you in a in you know one of those subcultures that still hunt for food and what you do have in this country i mean you do have uh you still have some folks they actually hunt for their own food maybe killing it with some deer and some wild turkey and stuff like that right but it's something to think about. It's something to, it's, uh, something to think about. Once again, something to think about. Like I say, this channel is to make you think. And if I'm going to honestly have you think, we got to think about everything. And, you know, the money piece got to be thought about. And how that's affected by someone's cultural, subcultural values. So anyway, 
that's it for today. I'll get back with y'all later. Peace and blessings.